Okay, today we'll be covering lesson three, Meet My Family. We want to talk about what is a family tree? What is your immediate family? Family member, kinfolk, next of kin. List all the family members below that you can think of by blood or family member by marriage or by the marriage of another. We'll explain that. First off, what is a family tree? What is a family tree? A family tree is a picture or a system that looks like a normal tree, but at the top usually are grandparents or even great-grandparents, and then your parents on one side of the tree, on the other is your spouse's parents, your husband or your wife's parents, and then your children and it shows a visual representation just like a tree of the genealogy of a family what is your immediate family for me my immediate family is my wife my children and it can be my wife's parents and my own parents and my siblings it that is that is the more immediate family but for some people it's just who you're married to and if you have your children for others if they're closer it's their brothers and sisters their family and then uh, of course your parents like grandparents uncles aunts cousins those tend to not be in immediate family, but it's not a hard rule. It, it, it can depend on what family you're talking about. Words for family members sometimes in the United States are kinfolk, next of kin. Next of kin can be a legal term, next of kin, someone that's responsible for you if they are your next of kin in certain legal or medical situations here if we talk about family by blood for example my children are my family by blood they have the same blood uh, some of my blood in their blood family by marriage my wife is family by marriage my wife's parents my in-laws my father-in-law my mother-in-law are family by marriage by the marriage of another if my sister gets married and I now have a brother-in-law then um, I am related to him by the marriage of another not by my own marriage oh <clears throat> let's just use the word brother now we can put in here, if you have a stepbrother, a half-brother, or a brother-in-law. A stepbrother is when you have a brother through the marriage of your mother or your father, and that person that they married has children. If my dad married um, a lady that had children that I was not blood-related to, then my stepbrother would be uh, those brothers, those children that my stepmom had. A half-brother is when they are related to me by blood, but only through my mother or my father. For example, if my dad was married before and had children, and then his wife passed away, and he married again and he had me then the children that he had in his first marriage would be my half brothers or my half sisters if they were girls and then brother-in-law my 
wife's brothers are my brother my brothers-in-law my sister's husbands are my brother-in-law and in this sense there's no distinction between if it's my sister who gets married or my blood brother that uh, my wife has both are my brother-in-law the issue of great 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 in in English our grandparents when we go back a, ge a generation we we say one great so it's my dad my grandfather my great grandfather if the more we go back we just add one great so my great great grandfather would be my great great grandfather then his son would be my great grandfather his son would be my grandfather his son would be my dad in English sometimes you have long lost um, and this can be a joke because if you normally talk with someone frequently that's your brother your sister your dad your mom your cousin your aunt your uncle and then you you don't speak with them for or message them or text them or email them or Facebook them for a few days and then you talk to them you can say oh my long lost brother my long lost sister but really long lost is when you haven't seen the person for a long time and then you you meet them for homework with this activity I ask that you tell a story about two different family members like we have never heard of them before can be any family member by blood by marriage or the marriage of another what is the ethnic background or backgrounds of your family mine is scotch irish from scotland and ireland but i could have many ethnicities in my family how do you discover this you have a dna test the question here is have you ever had a DNA test done? There is a site here you can look to about DNA tests. Uh, I think you can order them online uh, or you can check out in your city or your area where they have those tests. Uh, the information underneath, please look at this site and translate the different questions and answers you come across. That's homework for this lesson on family. Ken Ham, who is Ken Ham? Who is he? Uh, Ken Ham is a wonderful brother in the Lord who has a lot of ministry dealing with creation, with science, with information involving those two worlds and how they come together. Uh, he here's a sermon. Uh, where he talks about the video on message one blood one blood how the whole human race is one race really really there's not white race black white black race um, or any other races of people uh, Caucasian Oriental uh, Latin Asian um, European there is the human race and he talks about that in his message on one blood what is your understanding of the view of a biblical creation and what is taught in schools throughout the world today as evolution you can answer that question can you defend one against the attack of the other uh, do you have the ability to defend creation against evolution or do you have the ability to defend evolution against creation which is right obviously uh, I am a believer in creation as the Bible presents it and I think it is the correct argument because of that but there are many explanations that one can have involving those two different perspectives how does the one view or other impact the value of family to you it's a very interesting question how does creation impact the value you place on family how how would evolution impact the value that you place on family what is a difference you have noticed 
between your family and another family you have been close with? Uh, answer the question. Homework. What is the difference? It can be a physical trait. It can be a trait that involves your communication, uh, the size, uh, the language, body language, or the way you say words. Maybe you have a certain accent. Um, compare your family with the family of another that you're friends with. Who is the leader of your family? You know what a patriarch is or a matriarch? Patriarchal leadership or matriarchal leadership? Patriarch would be male. Matriarch would be female. Why do you think that is so? If you're in your family, your grandfather, for example, is the leader. Why is he the leader? Maybe your aunt in your family or your aunt is the leader. Why is that? Or your mom or your sister or maybe you're the leader. Why do you think the leadership is patriarchal or matriarchal in your family? Homework. Homework. Family of Jesus, Matthew and Luke, explain what you believe is the difference and why. In the genealogy in the book of Matthew and the genealogy in the book of Luke, explain what you believe the difference is. It's okay to look at study materials to give a good answer for that. I think it's very interesting. What are the roles of genealogies in history, in Brazil, and in the Bible? Why is it important to have a record of your genealogy? In history, has that been important? Is it been important in Brazil and in the Bible? Where are the key gene genealogies, and do you think that is important? Paternal and maternal. If you pay attention to like patriarchal, matriarchal, you know that paternal and maternal has something to do with the father and the mother. And if there are certain rights or certain traits that are passed on paternally or maternally, um, either in a legal sense or in a genetic sense. Homework. Explain the role of Noah and his family in terms of humanity and our ethnicities. What role did Noah have in determining the ethnicities of the world today? Uh, explain, uh, explain that to us. Explain how racial, quote-unquote, discriminations are not just a question of morality, if there is a morality that is to govern everyone, then who is the one that has given us a moral law to live by? Is it right or is it wrong to, to judge or to differentiate, to discriminate on the basis of what is considered race, which really is ethnicity, not race? Because if you are a person, then you are part of the human race. There is not a black race, a white race, a red race, a yellow race, an orange race, a purple race, a green race. There is the human race according to the biblical view. And that is the view that I am supposing. So if you do not accept that view, if you it creates a problem for you to have a moral basis for quote-unquote race if you accept evolution. So I want you to explain your position on that and why you hold that position. Also, this is a, this is a big issue. The issue of gender and the Bible today. Please share your thoughts. How does gender... How is that um, explained or thought about in the Bible today uh, as we deal with this issue that can be very controversial? 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 16, in the New King James Version, in the NKJV Version. 1. Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ. Here, there is an issue of head coverings in the church. Okay, so 
That's uh, just a text to help us understand this breakdown in verse 2. 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. 3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God, be God the Father. Four, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. Shorn is talking about uh, shaved. Let her head be, or let her head be shorn, or let her hair be cut. Let her let her head be shaved. But if it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But the woman, or but woman, is the glory of man. Think about that. That's, that's an incredible statement. Man indeed ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. God made woman from man. God made man from the dust. Men and women are made in the image and thus glory of God, but there's a distinction between man and women here in this passage. Verse 8, for man is not from woman, but woman from man. Eve came from Adam. Adam did not come from Eve. Okay? Verse 9, Nor was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. I think this explains a lot in our society and culture throughout the world how women are more social and can help each other more independently and individually as, as men generally can. Women do not need men as much as men need women socially um, and in other ways maybe also. But man was made first then woman. And man was made for man. Man was not made for woman. That's a, important to understand in terms of gender Identity rolls from the scripture. Verse 10. For this reason. What is this reason? The order of man and woman. The order of men and women. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head. Because of the angels. That's very interesting. How the angels are involved in the authority and the symbol of men and women. It's not something that the Bible really explains. It just says that. <clears throat> Verse 11. Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. In the Lord. We need each other in the Lord. Man is not more important than uh, a woman, and a woman is not important than a man in the Lord. We, we all need to, need to be together, and we certainly all need the Lord. Verse 12, for as woman came from a man, even so man also comes through woman, but all things are from God. So men, don't get haughty because you were made first. Don't get prideful. Because now we do come through women, and women don't be prideful because you started from a man, Adam, but 
all of us can't be prideful because we all came from God and he deserves the glory. Verse 13, judge among yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? 14, does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? 15, but if a man has, excuse me, 15, but if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, and it's very expensive to maintain. We understand that, women. We want you to have long hair, if possible, in general. For her hair is given to her for a covering, that symbol of authority that women have with men, that men have with Christ, that Christ have with God. Verse 16, but if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. Footnotes in the here, the uh, this text omits to her, so it would read, for her hair is given for a covering, not given to her for a covering. Okay, that's the text. Here are the questions. Study the words in the text in this passage. Do you understand? Do you not understand? Do you need help? Do you need help with the pronunciation or the translation from English to Portuguese? What questions do you have regarding these verses? What questions do you have regarding these verses? It can be a question of English or a question of theological or a philosophical or a, a, a kind of question you have involving those those uh, verses, the text. What are the principles of gender and family you can see in this text? What principles from this text that you can see that you can develop and, and apply in your own life? And do you have any other questions? Okay, this concludes lesson three on family. Please respond to this video if you have any questions, I thank you. God bless you.